Okay, hi there, Jeff back again with another in our key diagram video series. Uh, we're focusing on macroeconomics at the moment and uh, let's walk through together, if it's okay with you, a diagram showing the gains from trade, this time using supply and demand analysis. Now you can indeed use standard supply and demand curve analysis diagrams to illustrate some of the potential welfare effects of trade, uh, in particular how it impacts on two key concepts consumer and producer surplus. So in this diagram, we're going to walk through the potential welfare gains from a country being able to import steel at a lower price than if they relied only on their domestic steel manufacturers. The lower trade price, which you'll see in a few seconds, reflects a situation where other countries, other producers can manufacture steel at a lower marginal cost. Their supply price is lower. And if trade is allowed to function without import tariffs and non-tariff barriers, then the price of steel in that market will fall as imports come in. And imports indeed often take up quite a large percentage of domestic demand. It depends clearly on the gap between the trade price and the domestic price. So here we go. Contextualize your diagram. If you're looking at steel, price of steel on the y-axis, output of steel on the x-axis. Here's the demand for steel. Things like construction companies and car manufacturers, other people using steel that has a, a strong derived demand. Here's my domestic steel supply. Drawn it fairly inelastic. And if there's no trade, there's the equilibrium at output Q1 and price P1. Now, in a macro exam, don't forget, don't label, or don't shade your diagrams. Please label. It looks so much neater for the exam. So there's our equilibrium. And at price P1, consumer surplus is A, B, P1. Producer surplus is P1, B, C. Now, if we can now import steel at a much lower trade price, P2, what happens is that consumers will now want to buy more steel. They can get it more cheaply. Their real purchasing power has gone up. So we move from Q1 to Q2, an expansion of demand because steel is now cheaper. On the other hand, domestic steel producers, if they're price takers, they won't be able to sell as much steel at that price. Their output is likely going to contract from Q1 to Q3. The gap between Q3 and Q2 is likely to be imports of steel because other countries can produce steel uh, at a lower price. And I've labelled E and D there. Now, at price P2, consumer surplus rises to A, D, P2. Producer surplus, though, falls to P2EC. The fall in the price and the expansion of the demand has caused welfare to, to increase, but there's been a loss of producer surplus, uh, more, than, more than outweighed by an increase in consumer surplus. Now, you might want to take a screenshot. That is your trade diagram using supply and demand analysis. That's all you have to do. It's a great diagram to draw, especially if you show the welfare effects. So we've shown here that trade can lead to an increase in consumer surplus, micro concept applied to macro, but the producer surplus, another micro concept for domestic steel manufacturers, that will go down. Now this assumes, this analysis, if I go back the slide, there we go, look at the domestic steel supply curve there. This assumes that their costs stay the same. Of course, what might happen one of the dynamic effects of trade is to drive cost-reducing innovations. I'll actually do a separate video to show how you indicate that on the diagram in the next video. Uh, domestic producers might decide, well, OK, we've got this threat from cheaper steel. Let's raise our game. Let's raise productivity. Let's improve our efficiency so that we can uh, better compete with trade at price P2. OK, there we go. That's the first in this little suite of diagrams on supply and demand and trade trade benefits. Stay happy, stay positive. See you sometime soon.